So here you see the skeleton that I had been working and finally got assembled and ready to go out on the table. Uh, the beginning of this video I cover section 7-6 which is um, mostly about getting the skin of the rudder uh, put together and drilled and clecoed and deburred and just all the things you have to do to get it ready to go. Here I'm going through and I'm putting a whole bunch of Clecos on the uh, skin itself to just to make sure I've got everything lined up with the skeleton underneath. So as I do my match drilling, um, the holes will match up. Uh, earlier you might have noticed that I, I still had the bluing on the outside of the skin. Uh, I have I later in the video I don't show this but I, I later I, I remove all this clique going that I'm doing and put the uh, to, or take that bluing stuff off that protective layer off uh, I regret doing so now because uh, it's got a couple scratches on it now from where I laid it down so I'll have to be careful about that when I do my painting right here I'm test fitting the trailing edge um, learning how the trailing edge is going to work and how it's going to all fit together is something that I'm still uh, unclear on. Uh, there's not a lot of room there. In fact, I, I really don't know how you end up uh, riveting the two skins together. But anyways, this is what it looks like uh, with that skin. It flipped around the other way so you can see the inside, so you can see that the, the skin's there. And then I go through and here you can see I've pulled off all that bluing and I'm just going back and I'm match drilling all the holes and this video is sped up insanely. Uh, lots and lots of drilling because there are lots and lots of holes. This took all day. It was not a short process. And then it was a matter of taking everything apart and going through and deburring and drilling and then countersinking. And so here I'm using the sink tool and doing all the skin and doing everything else and makes just life easy. I mean, look at those. Those are beautiful. Those came out perfectly. It's exactly what we want them to look like. And here we go and do the other skin and then the frame and a lot of uh, machine countersinking the, uh, that end piece. And then eventually I went out and I spray painted everything, got it all primed up and ready to go. Uh, going through many, many a can of that. And then it was about uh, putting everything together. This is obviously the next day, and I'm on to uh, section 7-7 here. But, uh, yeah, that was fun. And then this is interesting what I was doing there. What I am doing here is I'm putting uh, lots of rivets in the little holes, and then I'm using the back rivet uh, head, which you can see there, to back rivet those ribs, those stiffeners, onto the skin, which is kind of interesting. I like how they did this. They they make you build the the skeleton and, and then they intentionally make you split the parts into either half and then when you put it all back together you kind of zip it straight up the middle which was clever uh, I did have a difficult time uh, back riveting not this piece that you see me working on now but uh, yes that piece the the bottom uh, there at the very end of it. In fact, I, I go through and I drill some of these out because I, I, the, it just didn't, they didn't come as clean as I wanted. So uh, using the squeezer sometimes, sometimes not. Uh, it really was an angle. You can see here uh, the way I've got the, the back rivet plate and then I'm using the tungsten bar and I'm actually bucking on the tungsten bar against the back rivet plate to kind of use it as a foothold. And it's a terrible camera angle because I'll just use my back half the time. But Eventually, I did get everything all riveted in place, and uh, but I, I did have some interesting time towards the end there, where that real narrow little uh, little spot is. Uh, and in fact, I actually talked to that. So step three of seven eight actually has you riveting this bottom piece of the rudder to the skin and it gets a little tricky when you get down here where there's just no room to work with. Um, I managed to get it just you're gonna have to uh, use several different pieces to get in this little gap to get that little bit of uh, metal that you need to give it a, a squeeze. I ended up using the back rivet plate 
and this uh, this bar with the footer on it to kind of get in there, and then I, sh you know, bucked on the bar, which pushed against the back rivet plate, which actually got the rivet. Worked. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the correct way to do it, but it's the only way I found to be able to get in here into this tight little area to make it happen. Uh, if you had a better solution, I'd love to hear it. And that's a true statement, by the way. Feel free to leave any comments or suggestions uh, in the video links below because uh, sometimes, hey, I know I don't know everything and I'd love to have information. Uh, and here I'm pop riveting, which I was surprised because I could have easily done those with the squeezer. But, eh, it all came out very nice.